Welcome back to this second lecture on this, in this lecture series on Windows Server 2016 with me, Joachim Schäverstor from the University of Skövde. Uh, in the second step of this lecture series, we're going to have a look at how to install, uh, configure and validate the DHCP server role. So remember that we talked about uh, IP addressing in the first lecture and we said that a very nice way to hand out IP addressing within a network is to use the DHCP server uh, in which you just configure a span of IP addresses that will be handed out automatically uh, in your network. So we can have our Windows Server 2016 act as a DHCP server and what we will have to do to get that functionality is that we will go up into the upper left corner and click manage and then we will have to add roles and features. So we get into this nice add roles dialog that we worked with last time or that we had a quick look at. So what we do is that we uh, click manage and then add roles and feature and what we get to now is a a little dialog where we can select what we want to install to this server. So first off we get some information and we need to have a password and, and all of that. So we just click buy this and then we can choose installation type. We will stick with role based or feature based installation for now. Uh, which uh, is basically what we do when we want to add roles or services or features to one single server. Uh, so we do that and we just click next. Then we get to the server selection menu. Uh, remember that we talked last time about uh, that it is possible to have one server manager instance on one single machine that manages uh, different servers from, out, uh, from throughout your network. But in this case, we only have one server in our network. So we'll just go with the default selection and click next. Uh, next, then we have a listing of all the different rules that we can uh, install. Uh, as you see, I've already installed the DHCP server so that I can speed up this presentation a little bit. Uh, but basically what we do here is select whatever services or whatever roles that we want to have. And the roles here are basically services that we can offer throughout our network. So we have the Active Directory roles, we have DHCP server as we're working with now, we have DNS server, we can even be a fax server if we want, if we want to feel a little bit legacy. Uh, so what we do is that we just click the one of those that we want to install. Since I've already done DHCP, I'm going to select Windows Server Essentials Experience down here and click Next. Uh, what happens when I select it is that Microsoft may say that, well, uh, you can install this, but you'll also need some extra services or features installed for it to work, and you may need some tools to manage it, uh, a nice uh, graphical user interface and such. What we do with that is basically that we can click add features and let Microsoft take care of us. Uh, and then we click next and we get to the features list that we discussed last time. This uh, is a listing of stuff that we can install that has to do more with how our server behaves. So we can install BitLocker drive encryption, we can have uh, an NFS client, we can have some enhanced storage stuff that I don't really know what it is, a lot of things. We're not going to have any of those now, so we'll just click Next. Then we get a little bit uh, information about the role that we're about to install. Seems very nice. I wouldn't have selected it unless I wanted it. Uh, next, we have a confirmation. Again, I wouldn't be installing this if I didn't want to have it, but thank you, Microsoft, for taking care of me. And something that is important to pay attention to is the little checkbox that is at the top of this dialog that says restart a destination server automatically if required. I, uh, this will make the server install uh, or restart if it needs during the installation. I personally like to keep this checkbox unchecked because I don't want my servers to uh, reboot in an un uncontrolled fashion. I'd rather have stuff installed and then reboot it later if necessary. So, to start the installation, we hit the install button. I'm not going to do this because I've already installed the DHCP role, so instead I just hit cancel. Uh, when the role is installed, some roles uh, do require some configuration before they're running, and you can see this by the r little yellowy triangle symbol that is up by the flag, which is your notification center. So in this case, the flag means that there is something we have to do. So if we click the if we click the flag, you see that we have to do some post-deployment configuration, which is to complete the DHCP configuration. And the bluish text is a link, so we'll just go ahead and click that and see what comes up. A nice new wizard that we just have to follow. So what we do is that we select 
uh, commit and what happens here is that some users that are needed for DHCP server to work are being created uh, so committing that it's all done and then close so now the DHCP server is in theory up and running but it isn't handing out any IP addresses yet because that is also something that we have to configure so now we go up to the right hand corner again but we click tools and you can see in this uh, in this menu here that we have the option DHCP so if we click DHCP we'll get to the management interface for our DHCP server which looks like this so what we have to do is browse down IPv4 and at, or just browse down in the left pane and then click IPv4 and then we can select new scope so what you would call what you call a DHCP pool in the Windows world is a new scope and what we need to configure is a scope of IP addresses to be handed out so we're starting this new wizard starting to click next and we can give it a name so let's just call it client IPs uh, next we have to select a start and end IP address so in this case uh, I'm going to hand out IP addresses in network 10 to 09.3 uh, and slash 24 so I can do whatever I want here let's hand out IP addresses between uh, 20 and 10 to 09. that didn't turn out quite as well as I planned 10 to 09 3 and 50 and that will be good and then select the subnet mask which I need to be 255 255 2550 and then next uh, what we can do then is to exclude some addresses from our span uh, in this case I selected a range of IP addresses that I want to hand out so I don't really need to exclude any IP addresses so I'll just click uh, click through that Next, we can set a duration for the lease, and the lease duration is how long the IP address is handed or how long the client is allowed to have the IP address before it has to give it back and ask for a new one. Uh, I'm fine with the defaults, so let's just go next. Uh, and the next option that we have is that we can uh, configure additional DHCP options. So what we can do if we do yes here is that we can configure the, uh, the DHCP server to send along DNS configuration, default gateway configuration, uh, domain name configuration and such. So that seems like a good idea, so let's do that. Uh, I'll click next. Uh, first, we need to add a router, which is a default gateway. In this case, it happens to be the first IP address in the range. So we'll just go 10, 209, 3, 1 and add. I only have one default gateway, so I'm just going to click next. And the next thing that we can do is to specify a parent domain and what a parent domain does is essentially whenever the machine does a name lookup for a, a DNS name lookup for a host name, yes the host name not the FQDN, it will append the parent domain automatically so this makes the stuff run a little bit smoother for instance when you have your full domain working you can access the server with just typing server instead of typing server dot something something in this case I know that my domain name will be do9joaka dot local so I'm gonna go with that uh, we can also include DNS servers and since this will be an Active Directory domain and the machine that we're working on right now is going to act as a DNS and Active Directory server. We can input the, uh, we can remove the current configuration, and instead we select the IP address of the server that we're working on. So that's 10.209.3.100. Uh, uh, this doesn't work as a DNS server yet, but it will in a little while. So we're gonna get uh, we, uh, the machine or DHCP server here is going to validate if the address that we inputted is a valid DNS server. Uh, it isn't yet, it says, but I'm gonna add it anyway because it will be when stuff is done. Uh, so we just click next. Uh, then we can input a WINS server. I'm not going to do that. So we just uh, hit next and then we get asked get gets asked if we want to activate the scope or not and yes I want to activate the scope because I do want to use it and then we hit finish so now that is all done 
uh, what we want to do next, just to uh, val validate that it works, is that we want to go into a client. So I have installed a Windows 10 client on the same network, so I'm going into that. So now we're here on my Windows 10 client that I've installed previously. So what we're going to do now is just to uh, make it take IP configuration from the server so that we see that everything works as it should. So the way that we do that is that we just click the magnifying glass and we type cmd to get a command prompt and then we can do a ip config to see the current ip configuration which is 169 uh, something identifying that it just made up some local ip address so we go do ip config dash renew and we will make our machine take um, dns con uh, or ip configuration from the server and as you can see here it gets a DNS suffix that is do9joaca.local. It gets an IP address of 10.209.3.20, which is the first one in the scope that we specified. So everything appears to be working just fine. And the last thing that we'll just go and do is go back to our server and we will have a look in our DHCP server, because if we go to, um, to our scope and then to address leases, we will be able to renew here and we can see what machines that are leasing addresses from this server. So we can see here as well that the client is leasing an address. So that's all for this demonstration on DHCP. Uh, when, we go, when we come back, we're going to see how we can make this machine a domain controller using Active Directory directory servers, uh, services and then thus make it a central user server. So thanks for this and goodbye.